Hi, this is Pramod Jaiswal from English Chronicles. I am going to take up another question from MEG3, the British novel, The Prime of Miss Jean Broody. Bring out the differences between the major characters in The Prime of Miss Jean Broody. It's a very nice question. So, I would like to begin the answer with a quote. Teachers are the like potters and students are lump of clay. They use their skillful hands to give the lump a shape desired by the potter. So we teachers play a great role in shaping the destiny of the students. Similarly was Muriel uh, Miss Broody, she was also a teacher and she had a set of six students with her. So Muriel Spark has portrayed Miss Broody as a skillful teacher. She is patronizing and wants to impose her whims and fancies and her wisdom on a set of six students whom she believes to be obedient, dedicated and sincere. She inculcates in them those qualities which she thinks beneficial and in accordance to her own concept which is based on primitive and orthodox rather than modern. Her perception is quite contrary to other teachers of the school, even to Miss Mackey, the headmistress. Miss Broody has taken the set of students in her confidence and they too respect her as a true mentor and obey her with utmost dedication, devotion and deliberation. They have blind faith in her, of which she takes occasional undue advantage. Spark has picked a gem from the set of students who has the potential and guts and grits to stand shoulder to shoulder by Miss Broody. Sanda is that protagonist who has the perception to visualize those malicious thoughts lurking within the heart, means hidden behind the heart and at the back of the mind of Miss June Broody. Sandy was the one who could perceive the hidden similarities between all of them. She could see the resemblance to Miss Broody reflected by all the portraits done by the artist. This discovery solidifies her suspicion on Miss Broody's emanating affection and love to Mr. Lloyd, the art teacher. Broody in fact loved him <coughs> by the sheath of his this affair. She flattered her Mr. Luther so that others can't come to a conclusion. Spark has introduced these two male characters, though not very significant. The story of Miss Broody revolves around them. Moreover, Sandy and later another student, Rose, also get involved. It is the subtle, subtle art of a spark to weave a cobweb in which five characters get entangled. The more they try to disentangle themselves, the more they got entwined in the web. Mr. Luther married a teacher, Miss Lockhart, thereby barring Miss Broody and prevailing them from insult, humiliation and infamy. But Broody's passion for Lloyd remained unabated, not reduced, but she couldn't dare to exhibit. Broody told Sandy of planting rose to the Lloyd's lovers, 
and Sandy as the informant to her. Surprisingly, the result was just contrary to the contrivance, what she expected. Sandy became Lloyd's lover. Spark did not let Broody to be the sole unvanquishable character. She could not be defeated. And dominating, persuading and maneuvering her students as she desired. Rather, created Sandy not only to oppose Broody <coughs> clandestinely, but also to ravage her identity. Sandy decides that she will no more be a sincere partisan, means follower, to Broody. Rather, she would always be in the lookout of pulling her legs. Broody told Sandy, that she regretted Sandy sending Joyce Emily to join the Spanish war. Emily was killed in an accident in a train. Sandy held Broody responsible for her death and decided that she has become too dangerous to teach students and imbibing such revolutionary notions in their minds. Sandy decided to help this Mackey, to help Miss Mackey, the headmistress, and told her that Broody cannot be implicated in sexual matters but can be pulled in political matters. Broody was expelled from the school for imparting his students about fascism. As a result, Broody started living a solitary and secluded life but always wanting to know who the betrayer was even till her grave. Her last wish remained unfulfilled. Sandy is high-spirited and always in quest of self-realization and moral growth. She liked Lloyd's religion more than Lloyd. So she severed asunder means cut apart the religious part from Lloyd and discarded Lloyd. Then after she became nun and from Sandy she became Sister Helena. Back to the life of his students in summer school. They developed interest in outside and miss practice sewing and <coughs> During with a boyfriend, Monica and Mary took to community services, Jenny working for a school dramatic society, Rose continued to model for Lloyd, Sandy along with Rose. Before leaving school, most of the girls took to something or the other. Conclusively, I would like to point out that five students and Lloyd and Luther seemed to be diminutive and trivial when confronting the domineer, domineering broody and shrewd, vile and determined Sandy. Though a character may be trivial, he becomes the link of the whole chain of the plot of the novel. It, if even one chain is snapped, the shackle of the entire plot is dismantled. A spark can never let her story wither and lose in the storm and lost in this the storm. So if you like my explanation and notes, please press the like button and share among your friends so that your, they may be also benefited by my notes. And please do subscribe to my channel so that time to time you are getting something fresh. Once again, I would like to thank you people for watching my video and it's a sort of propagation for me to move further in this line. Thank you. Have a nice day.